Good morning, folks. This is uh, John Rastetter, and Kara is going to remove the uh, the will begin soon sign here in a minute. And what I'd like to uh, share with you is our ability to uh, assist you in improving your overall performance. Kara, there still is the uh, Pomarco webinar will be coming soon image on my screen. It's been removed. You are on screen. OK, fantastic. So what I'd like to do is spend some time this morning talking about the uh, the audit process. But just as importantly, talking about the maintenance and support of your analogs roles, um, regardless of the type of printing that you're doing, whether it's on paper, film, or foil, or whether you're printing on a uh, inline press, a web press, or a corrugated direct board, uh, the concepts all remain the same. In order to be able to have the highest degree of efficiency and performance, you also have to be able you also have to be able to maintain that volume and the way that you maintain that volume is through proper procedures. The audit process is designed for a Pomarco representative to visit with you and to do an audit of every role in your facility. Under this COVID-19 issue that we have that's global in nature, um, our, our representatives can't visit your facility uh, because of our travel restrictions. And in all likelihood, you have travel restrictions in place that prevent visitors from coming into your facility. So what we'd like to do today, uh, it's afternoon here in Atlanta, Georgia. We have uh, folks online from India and the West Coast of the United States and Europe. So regardless of what time it is, um, I appreciate you joining me today. So what I'm going to do is put up a PowerPoint presentation and we'll walk through that PowerPoint presentation. And if you have any questions, we'll be taking questions at the end of our discussion today. And Kara is, you've heard her voice in the background. Kara is the marketing manager for our organization and uh, she's assisting me um, with this process today because I'm pretty new for it, new at it. So we've all talked in the past about the flexographic printing process and the heart of this process is the analogs role. There are many other aspects of this, um, and many other aspects of the process that affect production, affect quality affect your ability to meet the um, customer's expectations. Delta E if you're managing by Delta E, uh, solid ink density, um, sharpness of dot reproduction and so on. But the analogs role, because it is the key part of the ink metering system and the volume that it carries is, is critical in being able to, again, hit the Delta E or your solid ink density. Um, we want to make sure that that analogs role is well understood, that you're using the best possible technologies, and that you're maintaining that role in, a, in as pristine of a condition as possible. So ink has a direct effect. Uh, whether you're using a metering roll system on an older press or doctor blades that are you know, on a chambered system or a single blade system, they all directly have an impact on the metering process. And then, of course, end seals to prevent leaking. Um, your artwork's critical, your prepress is critical. The types of printing plates that you're using, obviously, there are many different types, different microcell texturing on the surface, uh, different durometers, all having an impact on overall print performance. But the key component that kind of ties all of this together is the operator. The man or woman who's running that printing press 
and ensuring that it's being adjusted properly, that all the considerations are being made and that that individual is a key person in making sure that that analog's role remains uh, clean and cared for properly. And by caring for that analog score, we're going to help you reduce the overall cost of your operation and improve your profitability. We'll talk more about that as we move forward. When you receive an analog roll from Pomarco, each roll has what we refer to as an ID number or an SR number, which gives you the ability to track that roll throughout its entire life. That SR number um, has all of its manufacturing detail behind it and our files here in any of our global facilities, uh, whether it be manufactured in the UK, La Palma, California, Batavia, Illinois, or here in Atlanta, Georgia, or produced from a mechanical process in our Roselle or Palmyra, New Jersey facility where we use electromechanical engraving. Every role has an ID which gives us the ability to ensure that that, that role's life we can track. We manufacture these roles very specifically starting with volume. Volume is the most critical component in the manufacturing of an analog roll. Once we identify the volume that we need, say for example, you know, 2.5 BCM for a, a wide web um, 150 line uh, flexo job, um, we want to maintain that volume. So we start there and then we back into a calculation to determine what line screens on that analog roll will provide the best volume. There also is uh, different types of engraving. 75 degree engraving, our eFlow extended cell technology, or a conventional 60 degree thermoflow engraving, um, all of which produce excellent results. And we'll talk about what those differences are as we go through the process. But when we manufacture a roll, the ID, the SR number is critical because we're going to provide you with a picture of that role in its virgin state as it leaves our facility with all the technical specifications. And that certification will follow that role through its entire life and we'll tie our audits directly back to that certification as well. So we talked about our engraving technology. Let's talk a little bit about our manufacturing plants again for laser engraving. So La Palma, California, um, outside of Los Angeles, is uh, one of our facilities. Batavia, Illinois, is a facility out north of Chicago. And we're actually building a brand new 36,000 square foot facility um, a few miles away that we'll be moving into in the next couple months. You all have an opportunity to take video tour, drone tours of the facility. For those of you that can't visit us live, um, we would be pleased to share all the things that we're excited about in that new Batavia facility. I am talking to you here from our Atlanta, Georgia facility, um, and it's on the uh, east western side of uh, the city of Atlanta. And then we also have a plant in the UK, which all of our facilities, regardless of the country or location, are using fiber optic laser technology where we're able to use multiple hits to carve an analog roll cell. Um, and what that does for us is it creates an exceptionally smooth engraving, smooth cell bottoms that are relatively flat. And that because of the flatness of that cell in our manufacturing processes, post engraving, polishing by a machine using diamond film, we're able to have flat, smooth uh, cell walls, which ensure that the doctor blade sets in quickly and that the roll has maximum life. The difference between our eFlow technology and our thermoflow technology is the ability of the cell to transfer ink to the surface of the plate and then in turn to the substrate. eFlow technology that extended cell, we're able to increase the line per inch across the cylinder by roughly 40 percent, 
that increase in, in line count across the cylinder provides more doctor blade support, more walls across the cylinder. It also provides a smaller droplet of ink that's applied to the surface of the plate and then in turn to the web, which the smaller the droplets of ink while maintaining the same volume produces a higher degree of sharpness. The eFlow technology, because of its ability to replant it itself in the chamber uh, or the single blade system, also gives us the ability to have higher ink densities. The image at the above is an example of a corrugated job um, printed on post print, a clay coated liner, and the image on the left hand side is done with eFlow without any ink adjustments, without any plate adjustments. Uh, the thermoflow technology on the right hand side, and you can see the vast difference in the solid ink density. Eflow technology tends to be used, you know, up until you get to, let's say, 5 BCM, and then as you go lower in BCM, the thermo te thermoflow technology um, continues to be used more prevalently. Although we do have Eflow customers that are using it exclusively regardless of the uh, volume on everything from wide web flexible packaging to corrugated combined board applications. And here's an example. Uh, left hand side is Thermoflow. I'll point out the engraving again. It is a very smooth bottom, well defined cell structure. And that, that reflective dot in the center is the very center of the bottom of the cell. Same thing applies over here. You see the reflection in the bottom of the cell. It's important to remember that because these are, these are new engravings that we're looking at. When we start looking at used engravings, we'll see the difference when they begin to be plugged with inks and coatings at the base of those cells. So, if you have an 800 line, 60 degree engraving, conventional engraving, thermoflow, that's going to be roughly 2.5 BCM. You specify the BCM. Our manufacturing specifications are what you order minus 0% plus 5%. So you're never going to get a roll below what you've asked for, but there always is a manufacturing specification there. And the same role to produce that 2.5 BCM on an eFlow engraving is actually a thousand line per inch. To give you an example of what the differential is, we come down here to a 500 conventional 4 BCM, 600 eFlow 4 BCM. And you'll see the difference between the engravings and we talked about the performance of each, both provide excellent performance based on what your application is. So there also is, for those of you who operate multiple plants or varying equipment in a plant, there is a, there is a benefit of being able to have uniformity between your plants or between your equipment, which provides added consistency. That consistency of engraving choices gives you the flexibility to move work from one facility to another while maintaining your customers' expectations in regard to performance. And part of what we, we go through in establishing that kind of consistency is the audit process, helping to identify the, the condition of roles, as well as other services that we provide, like a banded role evaluation, which helps you dial in your expectations for volume and line count. So here we're looking at a, a graph of a analog rolls life. Why do, why do analog rolls have an end of life um, where they need to be reprocessed or re-engraved? And this end of life depends on a whole lot of different factors. Um, 
but we're going to start from the assumption that we have a properly specced roll. This roll has been properly manufactured and it's been used and maintained um, properly. A roll is, you know, depending on the application and depending on the volume, and we'll talk about that shortly as well, rolls have an 18 month to five year lifespan before they require re-engraving, and that's on average. But what kills these analogs rolls quickly is damage. And you'll see here on this chart that 75% of the analogs rolls that we reprocess have been damaged one way or the other. They can be damaged by score lines, they can be damaged by impact, um, or in the, in the occasional case, somebody drops a tool into the nip while the press is running or a bolt comes loose and we'll see a pattern of an Allen key repeating itself around the analogs roll as it's coming in for initial inspection. In all cases that I've seen, even those severe damages can be repaired through our machine shops and our processes for re-engraving analogs rolls. You also note on here that a fair portion of these rolls that come back for re-engraving probably never should have been shipped to us if they had been properly processed or properly maintained in your process. And that is where we're calling out plug rolls. Plugging can be prevented and it will greatly enhance your, your analog spend, reducing it and improve your overall performance if we're able to address that. We'll talk about that in more detail as well. So what is proper analog roll handling? And the first thing that we want to make sure that you're doing is that your inspection process of analog roll starts at the delivery dock. When you receive an analog roll from Pomarco, your receiving department should be instructed to thoroughly inspect the crate that it comes in. And if there's any noted damage to the crate that a, you know, that you receive the goods, but you note possible hidden damage. And that way it gives you a recourse to the shipping company, to the freight company to repair that role or pay us to repair that role if it is damaged. Once you open the crate, you inspect the crate, you wanna keep that role covered and you want to keep it covered as long as you possibly can. If it's a large roll that you're using a, a, a crane or an overhead hoist to lift that you want to make sure that the choke strap is centered in the roll, you want to make sure that that roll is balanced properly as you're lifting it out of the crate. And as always, you want to use the highest caution for safety when you're moving a roll um, and repositioning it or putting it into the press. You want to carefully slip the tape that's holding the protective cover on. And that protective cover is there to not only protect the roll in transport, but protect the roll in its initial handling. But your operator should always be instructed not to use a razor knife to cut through that paper and tape because it has the potential to scoring the analog roll and damaging cells across the cylinder. Once you remove the paper, you want to inspect the surface. On occasion, an operator may bump that paper covering um, as he's handling the roll. And that if, you if you note that there's paper stuck in any of the cells, a good tip is to use some masking tape, wrap it around your finger, sticky side out, and use that masking tape to remove any paper fibers. So to kind of go back over the analog roll damage, impact um, is one of the most serious forms of damage or the most uh, common forms of damage. Ceramic is very hard, but yet it's very brittle. But the steel underlinement or the aluminum tube that's on the top of a sleeve, uh, a sleeve analog roll is soft enough that you can often put a dent in the surface of the analogs roll without damaging the ceramic. 
and a severe dent will damage the ceramic. That would be considered improper handling as well. Another way to damage a roll is to, to improperly clean the roll. And this could be simply by not following the cleaner manufacturer's recommended procedures. Analox rolls should never be exposed to a cleaning chemical with a pH, a with a pH above 12.5. And it should never be put onto the roll and left to stay on the roll for extended periods of time. So follow the, your manufacturer's cleaning, the, the cleaner manufacturer's protocol. Contamination in the inking system, whether it be from doctor blade fragments or hardened resin particles, improperly maintaining the pumping system, all those contaminants can cause score lines. And that's why we recommend filters and magnets to be used in, in line with your ink pumping system. All of this can create premature wear. But probably the most critical thing is plugging. Remember we talked about if you maintain the roll and you, and you don't improperly handle it and damage it from impact, you wanna make sure that that roll stays clean. And what we wanna make sure is that you're managing your ink system correctly. You know, here in Atlanta this morning, it's uh, 65 degrees two days ago, and in Dallas, it was 80. When the temperatures start to rise as summer months approach, you need to spend extra time ensuring that your team are monitoring and controlling ink viscosity. If you're using a water-based system, pH, and regardless of the inking system that you're using, temperature control. As the amines flash off, of the waterborne ink or as viscosity climbs on solvent based ink, um, it increases the likelihood of plugging. And as it increases the likelihood of plugging, um, so goes your quality at press side and your costs begin to increase. So we want you to have a daily, weekly, and a monthly maintenance program. And an audit process is going to help you understand how well your team is managing and keeping your roles clean. And then in turn, we can help you build a cleaning and maintenance program that will effectively uh, improve your overall performance. Tools for cleaning. Um, there's a lot of different ways to clean um, analogs roles from manual to automated systems. Um, but you always want to use the correct surfactant or soap uh, to ensure that if you know you're using the, the right materials to remove the ink uh, contaminants that based on the type of ink that you're using. Corrugated applications, cleaning plates, a fantastic product. Um, it's a microfiber cleaning pad that's the size of a typical plate. It's mounted onto a carrier. It's on the plate cylinder and it automatically cleans while you're pumping the cleaning solution through the pump lines and onto the surface of the analog roll. Laser and soda blast systems are, are capable of performing excellent results, both on press and off press. The key is know the process that you're using sure that it's you're following the manufacturer's recommendation and design a protocol around your daily, weekly, and monthly cleaning, you'll extend your analog roll life. So to continue on with that uh, process now, we've ensured that we aren't damaging our analog rolls, so we want to make sure that we have the highest possible volume that that role came with and maintaining it over the course of time. Pomark goes down 70,000 audits over the last 10 years. And what we find is that 25% of the roles show wear, 10% show some level of damage, but 65% have lost volume due to poor cleaning. E-flow helps in this area. Those roles stay cleaner for the higher volume roles. But at the same time, if we're able to reduce 
the amount of plugging, we're able to provide some pretty significant benefit to the bottom line of your printing operations. Think about it this way. The paragraph at the bottom that's bold has some underlined sentences. Saving 15 minutes a shift on, an, on Anilof's cleaning issues is worth roughly seven shifts of production in the course of a year. So think about that. If you value that 15 minutes and you're able to reduce it or eliminate it, you're able to produce extra production time, but more importantly, you're able to save the cost of that downtime in relationship to saleable product. So what's wear look like? First thing that happens is the cell walls get wider. You can see from the original engraving here, a very fine uniform cell walls. And then as the doctor blade wears against the, the roll, the cell walls increase in width. They increase in width. And you'll see that these rolls are very clean. If you can see the reflection at the bottom of the cell, there's virtually no contamination at all. They've been well cared for. Same here, but they're worn. Surface gets very shiny. Cells get shallower. The volume is reduced. And in turn, you're, you've got lower solid ink density. You get less ink onto the sheet. And the initial wear of that cell, if you, if you look at this pattern we have here at the bottom, designating what a cell shape would be for a 60 degree engraving, as you remove the cell walls at the surface here, um, you're, you're losing more volume as this roll wears, the farther down cell walls wear. So what's plugging look like? We, the prior slide, we looked at some engravings that were worn but clean. Here's engravings that aren't necessarily worn, but they're contaminated with ink or coating. You can see the buildup on the top right hand corner in various areas. You can see the buildup in the lower left hand corner. And here you can see the cells virtually completely plugged in the lower right hand corner. So why do we audit an analog roll? If you're printing wide web, flexible packaging, wide web paper, chances are you want to make sure that your analog roll has no less than 10% reduction in the effective cell volume. Because if you begin to see more than 10% reduction, you're gonna start requiring press side ink toning if you're printing corrugated, for example, that number might move to 20% effective cell volume drop before you start seeing press side issues. And it's purely based on the complexity of the work. If you're printing 150 line screen uh, process on corrugated, you're gonna be working in that same 10% area. So what, what happens if you fall outside of that area? You're gonna create downtime, as you are adjusting for ink. You're also going to increase the cost of the ink because now you have all this adjustment at press side and you're likely now to end up with um, ink that needs to go back and get reprocessed. That creates more ink in order to be able to finish the, the job as it's done. And more of a risk is if this job gets rejected by your customer for um, falling outside of their Delta E specification of, let's say, maybe two. An audit is going to provide you a tool to be able to build a preventative maintenance program. That's what we're, what we're talking about today. It identifies the need for training and what kind of training is required, and you will see a improvement in profitability. So what is an audit? An audit Marco's audit is the most comprehensive that's available. Um, we use very sophisticated technology. Uh, we use microdynamic scopes. They're actually produced here in Georgia. Each of our plants have multiples of those scopes. And here in Atlanta, our technical service facility, um, we have 
the same scope. So all of our facilities worldwide are using the same device that we're able to ensure that if your analog roll, for example, is produced in, in Los Angeles and you also have an operation in the UK or in Spain or in uh, Shanghai, every one of those locations where we produce a roll, we can send to you a, a the exact role we can recreate the same the same process because we use all the same technology from laser engraving through to measurement devices. So when that role, that original SR number we were talking about, when that SR number is provided in the audit process, we're able to pull up the information of what it was when it was created, and we're able to compare that against the audited role after a year, two years, three years to determine how well it's performing and how how the uh, how much life is left in that role. So it gives you an a instant snapshot of Analog's inventory throughout your plant. Our intent is when this COVID-19 is gone, we will be able to come into your facilities and audit every role in your facility. In the meantime, what we're trying to do is educate you on how to do an audit. We'll get to that in a minute. And that education means that we'll be able to send to you a packet of information, instructions, the audit materials that are necessary, and return instructions so that you can audit your role, mail that packet back to Pomarco, and we'll provide you with a report. The start of that report is imaged here on the left-hand side, which gives you a picture of the role, a picture of the cells, and talks about the effective cell volume condition, whether it's plugged, comments about how what action should be taken on the roll, and then finally an overall report card. So what we would like to do is schedule to do this with you minimum of once per year, and then any time that you have print related problems that you'd like to further investigate. We use a process called a microfax strip. It's a product that is uh, very unique. I'll show it to you here in a minute. It's a resin encapsulated in a foil, and we impress it into the surface of the roll, creating a reverse image of that roll. It's far superior to something like a K-patch. K-patch will tell you volume, but it won't tell you the condition of the roll. Whereas this tells you a much more accurate uh, volume, but at the same time gives you all the various technical information, including an image. So let me show you for just a moment. I'm going to switch to a different screen here. So I hope you all can see me now. And this is this is the microfax material. You see that it has a silver square in the center. That's the foil. Below it is a resin that's going to capture the image. We're going to take that material, put it onto the surface of an analog roll, and then we're going to rub it with a the end of a BIC ballpoint pen. It's a smooth, hard surface on the end. And I'm going to show you this. We're going to do that with pressure uniform, creating a stripe. We're only going to use one pass. And then we're going to raise the pen and move it slightly and do a second pass. So now on the same uh, piece of tape, we have two images. It will then be placed onto a card like you see here. I just placed it onto the card. And we're going to capture all of the information associated with your press. And if you know the SR number, you're going to place that in here as well. If you have uniform performance on an analog's roll from the operator side to the gear side, you're going to take one impression per roll. If you have a technical issue you're trying to address where you have higher density on one side of the roll than you do on the other, 
will ask you to take three root three um, micro faxes for the same role operator side center gear side that'll tell us whether or not there's a higher degree of wear on one side of the roll than the other or a higher degree of plugging on one side of the roll than the other so what i'm going to do now is go back to the presentation if i can and i'm going to show you a video here so you've seen what the microfax materials look like so now we're going to take an audit of this small roll and this is a test roll you'll notice that it has two different engravings on the surface of the roll so we're going to put the tape down in this case i'm going to use the corner of a box that the material comes in again it's a smooth round hard surface and i'm going to put one stripe onto the tape and i'm going to do that with only one pass because you can't if you do two you distort the image that we're creating in three dimensions the second pass here is creating a second stripe on the surface of that tape basically what i just showed you a minute ago we now have on the back of this tape that is a direct one-for-one one reproduction of what the analog's role um, is. So here's how our process works normally. Is we, our technical sales representatives, would visit with you, determine what the level of concern you might have with the condition of your analog's role inventory. We'll set up a time to come in and audit. Um, well, we typically, you saw how quickly that is. If you're ready for us, it's a matter of minutes per color. Um, it's quicker if we're going through a, a list of analogs rolls that are outside of the press. If they're in the press, you know, we got to just want to make sure that the area that we're testing, we clean to the best of our ability. Um, and then we'll, you in this case, will be sending to us that packet of information that I described including the press information, your contact details, uh, email, and the microfax strips that you've used. They'll come back to the Atlanta laboratory here, where Tabitha McDonald, our laboratory technician, will evaluate the um, microfax strips, and we'll provide you back with a complete analysis. Let me show you a little bit more about what we're doing so in this particular case you know we've already done the audit um, we're going to put that audit on a card and there's a hole punched in the card and the purpose of the hole is to protect what you've just created through rubbing it into the analogs roll the card thickness will protect that microfax material we want all your press information which includes the press manufacturer, any press code you have, uh, the print station or the ID that you use. Because when we get, when you get the report back from us, you're gonna wanna be able to know exactly what analogs role we're talking about that requires whatever attention that we've de defined that it needs. So the more information you provide, the best, uh, the best information we can provide back to you. So this is the microdynamic scope. It's an inferometer. It's capable of creating then through, through scanning the, the surface of that microfax material. It scans the image and creates a three-dimensional mathematical model. That model then creates the image. It also gives us the ability, you know, you won't see it on this, but it also gives us the ability to create a side view of it as well. So the, the further evaluation, we're able to gain a lot of good information. On this um, scan, you'll see that this is a pretty clean roll. Um, 
and Tabitha is going to do one report per audit um, for Microfax. So let's take a look at what this report looks like, what kind of information you're going to get back. In this particular case, um, Mike Poppin has produced this audit. He did it towards the end of last year. It's an F and K press. The original volume of this analog roll was 5.5 BCM. We're showing 64% effective cell volume. We're recommending that this roll be re-engraved. And you'll note that you can see that nice reflection at the bottom of the cell. That indicates, as I look at all these cells, that this roll is clean. There may be some plugging, as we're noting here. We go to the next. This is an e-flow engraving. You notice the elongated cell. Also noted the increase in the walls thickness. This is off of Gopford Press. It's print station number four. It's done by Shane Weber. It started life as 7.5 BCM. And we're now running at 73.6 effective cell volume. Some plugging, clean and continue to use. And here's the rolls virtually in pristine condition. Um, again, done by Shane Weber um, in January of this year. Started out as original cell volume of six. We're now at 98%, and that's 5.93 BCM. So let me use this as an opportunity to point out a couple other things. We're, you know, this device that we're using is very sophisticated. It's capable of determining what the depth of the cell is, 24.43 micron how wide the cell is, 66.1 micron in width, and the wall thickness, the thickness of these walls averaging is 4.5 micron. And it has effective depth to opening ratio of 37% and a wall at opening ratio of 7%. So all of this information is very valuable in evaluating the condition of the roll and giving us the ability to give you a report card that would look something like this. So, you know, we basically provide a traffic signal type analysis. Very quickly, what roles are good? What roles have light plugging? What roles have more severe plugging? And which roles you need to take immediate attention with and monitor? So the self audit kit that we're going to be sending to you is going to include instructions. You'll be able to find on Pomarco's YouTube channel videos about how to do this as a refresher. We're going to send you Microfax strips. We're going to send you one of these fancy big pens that I was talking about and a card and the necessary information to return it to us. And if you provide us with the necessary information, contact details and so on, we'll be sure to be able to get that back to you, follow up with email, and at an appropriate time in the future, when your plant is open, we'll be ready to uh, come in and do a uh, complete audit. So I really appreciate the time today, and I'd like to open up to uh, questions. Care is gonna help me um, go through the questions and look forward to seeing what you all think. Hi, Kara. Hey, John. Hey, John. So, so one question that, that was asked was, how do you determine your target BCM screen angle and screen count for aqueous coating applications? Mike Poppin has actually joined the conversation um, and he offered a little input and said that we can determine the correct volume for a target coat weight with a little application knowledge along with the weight of the coating in pounds per gallon um, and the percent solids. Well, thanks, Mike. That was a that was a great response. And there's another tool that you may be able to also use, which is on Pomarco's website. 
and the quick way to get there is search calculators. Calculators will provide you with um, coat weight calculators uh, as well as analogs roll calculators to determine the, the combination of volume and screen and a variety of other really helpful tools. The next question that we have in water based inks, if the pH is acidic and high hardness of water, what is the effect on the rolls? OK, so water based inks tend to have a pH of 9.5, so basic. You want to be able to maintain what the ink manufacturer requests or requires. What happens is if the amine, the ammonia in the water based ink, begins to flash off based on temperature, the ink begins to con congeal or cure, and that causes the roll to plug. It causes dirty print and a variety of other issues in regard to you know, overall print performance. So, you know, we represent a company called Gamma. Uh, Gamma manufactures state-of-the-art viscosity, pH, and temperature control. So if you maintain the temperatures, you have less flash off of the pH component or the amines, and you're able to manage the viscosity correctly. So we adjust for viscosity and pH, and temperature all at the same time. Obviously, if you're running solvent based inks or UV, you're not going to need you're not going to need certain components of that like PA. OK, um, another question that we have. Um, what is a recommendation for the best products for daily or monthly cleaning? Um, of roles that only run aqueous and UV coatings. OK, we have a product called Cell Restore, which works with both UV and aqueous coatings. Um, whatever chemical that you choose to do your cleaning with, that role should not be allowed to set for any extended period of time before it's clean. So the first thing is when that press stops, that roll should be cleaned if it's going to be down for any period of time. On a weekly basis, that roll should be thoroughly cleaned using a microfiber pad and the appropriate chemical. And if you follow those procedures for coating, cleaning your coating rolls, you'll find that you maintain consistent volume. OK, um, that looks like that was all the questions that I have so far. Well, thank you, Kara. You're going to provide your contact details, I know. And so if anyone is looking for a kit that they would like to uh, do their own audit, we'd be glad to respond and mail that out to you. Um, if there are any questions that you would like to, to have answered by email, or voice, um, please provide Kara with your contact details again, yeah. and we'll be able to respond. And thanks for the help, Mike. I'm, I'm glad you were able to participate today. Thank you, Kara. Thanks, John. Everybody be safe and healthy.